Hey there drone fans, in today's video I'd like to cover obstacle avoidance and more specifically APAS, which is an incredible technology that DJI kind of quietly introduced into some of their newer drones a few years ago that I think is an absolute game changer. Now before I get into the APAS technology, let's talk about obstacle avoidance in general because if you're flying a drone, you're up there in the air, you're navigating 3D space, and there's all kinds of obstacles all around you. There's a tree, there's a wall, who knows what's up there? So having the ability for the drone to sense that obstacle and take some action is a really big thing. Now if I go way back to the early days of obstacle avoidance, there were a couple of sensors on the front of most drones and they could look out in front, maybe 10 or 15 feet, 30 feet, and they would find an object that they thought was a solid object, and all the drone did was break. So it just stopped you from running into that object, which was a big boon. But the problem was, if you were going sideways, if you were coming down or going up, or you were going backwards, you were kind of at your own peril. I mean, there was no way to sense those obstacles. So over the years, all the drone manufacturers got a little bit smarter, introduced a forward-looking sensor, a backward fence sensor, maybe a lateral sensor, certainly one up and one down, and it got a lot better. Now, the three drones I have in front of me, this is the Mini 4 Pro, the Air 3S, and the Mavic 3 Pro, all of these have 360 degree obstacle sensing, which means there's essentially a digital bubble around these drones. So when you're flying them through the air, it's gonna, it's gonna sense something on the side, something in front, above. So I don't wanna call them crash proof because you can certainly crash these drones, but it really does make them incredibly safe up in the air. Now, the difference between the three essentially comes down to this one has optical sensors uh, all around. So it's got binocular opti optical sensors on the front, the sides, the back, up and down. These use the same type of sensors, but they've also introduced a new technology called LiDAR, which doesn't really help during the day, but LiDAR is great when it gets darker or there's a big difference between light and shadows when you're flying through the woods. So they're a little bit safer because of that LiDAR technology. But I have to tell you, the Mini 4 Pro for me is an absolutely amazing machine because it's got all kinds of features built in, especially around APAS, which again, I think almost makes it crash proof. Now, in the evolution of crash avoidance, um, Skydio, which is a competing company that, you know, not really around anymore in the, in the space where we fly, but they were the pioneers in what I'll call advanced obstacle avoidance because just detecting an obstacle and stopping is great. But if I can detect the obstacle and find a way around it, that's even better. And that's where they pioneered. They were the first ones that came out with a very sophisticated algorithm that would recognize an obstacle and plan an alternate path around that obstacle. And they actually built in a little bit of AI. They've got a neural network inside, they're using a Jetson chipset. So if you're into AI, all of those things will make sense to you. But for the regular guy like me, it's just a really smart drone. But the big advantage for Skydia over every other drone on the market, including the DJI products today, was that unlike a DJI drone and most drones that use binocular sensors, they're using three cameras. They've got one here, one here, and one here and that's trinocular sensing. Now, what's the difference? Well, binocular sensing is two cameras, which gives you a really good idea of depth. So it can see objects in front of it and do a rough approximation of how far those objects are from each other, but it's not perfect. With trinocular vision, it can give you better depth perception. It can also look at the surface of an object a little more clearly so it can determine, is that really something that I should avoid or is it just something in the air that isn't really gonna be a problem to me? So this product initially, had phenomenal obstacle avoidance. It would stop and it would find a way around a particular obstacle. DJI introduced a digital version of that that uses binocular sensing. Now, binocular sensors are great. I mean, as a human, we're binocular creatures. We've got two eyes and we can sort of sense depth. You close one, you kind of lose sense of depth. And the reason we can navigate a door frame is because we've got binocular sensors and we can find our way through the door frame. Now, I'm sure all of us have bumped into a door frame at one point, but it's not because you can't judge depth, it's because you're goofy. But anyway, the binocular sensors give you a really good perspective of what's in front of you, what's behind you, either side of you, above and below. So these three drones have that 360 degree protection that you can fly them pretty much knowing you're not gonna run into anything. Now, obstacle avoidance itself is really basic, so it'll stop the drone. Where these three drones really excel is when you turn on APAS. Now, APAS stands for Advanced Pilot Assistance System. And APAS, to me, is this magical technology that enables the drone to be situationally aware up in the space, so it knows it knows where it is in 3D space based on GPS coordination and a bunch of other things, but more importantly, it can look around it 
and it can find solid objects, which allows it to avoid those, but it can also predict where the holes are that it can fit through. So it's not only looking for solid objects to avoid, it's looking for spaces that it can fit through. Well, how does it know it can fit through that space? Because it knows how big it is three-dimensionally. So it knows this is a bubble flying through the air. It has to find a hole that the bubble can fit through. And APASS allows it to do that. Now, inside the settings, you'll go in there, you'll turn on obstacle avoidance, and you have three choices. You can turn it off. Don't do that. Keep it on. You can put it in break mode, which means all it's going to do is it's going to act really basic, where it's going to see something and stop. That's great. At a minimum, keep that on. But if you put it in bypass mode, that turns on APASS. And again, what that does is collects a lot more information when it's flying about what it sees around it and finding spots that it can fit through. And it knows its size. So the bubble this one creates is smaller than this one and smaller than this one. This drone needs a lot more space to fit through because it's bigger. When you fold those arms out, it takes up a lot of space in the air. This one's a lot smaller. They all have it. They're all amazing at it. And uh, I'm going to show you some testing I did with the Mini 4 Pro in a minute. But inside of that bypass feature, DJI again took it another level up and introduced both a, a basic normal setting and what's called Nifty. Now, now Nifty takes a little bit more risk with the drone. So Nifty will use the same parameters and the same sensing, but it's looking at the area and it's saying, you know what, I can get a little closer to that object. Now, where I would use Nifty versus not use Nifty is if I'm flying in an area where I've got clearly defined obstacles. Maybe I've got tree trunks that don't have a lot of branches sticking out. I'm not near wires. I'm not near other small objects. Um, Nifty's kind of cool. The advantage to Nifty is that it allows you to fly a little more smoothly. So it'll, it'll uh, navigate that area a little more smoothly. It also allows you to get a little closer to the obstacle. So if you're flying in an area that's really constrained, and there aren't a lot of small things that you might run into, turn on Nifty, you're gonna have a lot of fun with that. But for me, when I'm in bypass mode, I'm using normal, which gives me the ability to navigate a very complex environment smoothly, and I'm not gonna to get too close to things. So again, my advice is, if you're flying in a forest with a lot of branches and brambles, don't fly in Nifty mode, because you may get lucky, but you may not. It may run into that branch and crash, fly it in normal mode. So let's talk a little bit about the sensing capabilities of all these drones in particular, because when you look at how far away they can sense and what they're sensing, there isn't much difference between them, but the Mini 4 Pro for me was really surprising because it's a smaller drone, less expensive drone, yet the specifications on this are really good. So if I compare the drones against each other, and I'm looking at just the Mini 4 Pro, the Air 3S, and the Mavic 3 Pro, if you look at the Mini 4 Pro, I've got front, back, up, and down, and then lateral. They're pretty impressive. If I move to the Air 3S, there's not much of an advantage outside of the lateral. Now, lateral is left and right, so if you're, if you're moving left and right, the Air 3S has got a little bit better sensing in that direction. But I would have expected the Mavic 3 Pro to have amazing differences there. And if you look closely, it really doesn't exceed the Air 3S in many categories at all. Matter of fact, in lateral, it's dropped down to 25 meters. Okay, down it's got better sensing. But up it doesn't. Up it's down to 10 meters, which is lower than the Mini 4 Pro. Uh, and again, from front and back, it's about the same as the other two. And the difference, again, comes down to the way it's doing the sensing. So with the Mini 4 Pro, it's got binocular sensors, which are vision sensors. These two use the vision sensors and that LiDAR out front. So they're a little bit better in the front in darker environments or mixed environments where it's light and dark. Now, what I'm going to show you next are three examples of a Mini 4 Pro flying through an incredibly uh, crowded, wooded area down in the Pine Barrens. And the first example is just me putting the drone up in the air and hitting the joystick forward and firing it into the woods. And you'll see it navigate around a lot of different trees. The one thing that APAS requires is a really good, clean environment that's brightly lit. So if you've got dark areas, it's not as great because you can't really see the things because there's no LiDAR. Um, and you want to be careful about light and dark shots in between. So if you've got an area that's really light and you fly into a dark area, it takes a second for it to adjust. So the second test I'm going to show you is me flying through an area on purpose where I've got light coming in. So I've got flashes of light coming in, and I'll show you how well it navigates that. Then the third example, <laughs> I tried to do a crash test where I tried to crash the drone. So I'm flying it through a bunch of trees, and I'm not just pushing the joystick forward, I'm actually varying the lateral movement of the drone, trying to aim it at a tree, and the drone will actually navigate away from that tree to avoid the tree. And I think, 
what it's doing essentially is it's acting like a co-pilot that's saying, Rick, you're getting kooky out here. You're heading for a tree, dude. I'm taking over. We're pulling you away from that tree. So I thought that was pretty amazing. So let me show you those three examples, then I'll come back with some final thoughts. In this first test, I'm in normal mode for bypass, and I'm just going to push the joystick forward. It's heading right for a tree. Now watch what happens. It jogs left, jogs left again. Now I'm in open field. I'm heading for a large bramble of trees. Watch what happens here. It's going to dodge the one on the left, dodge the one on the right, split the difference between those two, and then head straight up for another tree in front of it. I think this is incredible. In the second video, I was testing to see how much sunlight affects the obstacle sensing capabilities of the drone, and I'm sending it into a group of trees in front of me, and the sun is right overhead, and you can already see that sun strobing in the video. I'm heading for a tree, and it jogged to the right. No problem there. I'm heading directly for another tree, and that sun is getting brighter, and it dodged that one as well. And now I'm heading into a really gnarly area with a lot of sunlight, and it's dodging all those trees easily, so it's not affecting it at all. In this third video, I'm in bypass nifty mode, and it's flying between those two trees, and I'm actually trying to crash the drone at this point. I'm pulling hard to the left, and it's fighting me. Now I'm pulling to the right. I'm pulling back to the left again. And finally, I'm trying to pull hard to the right to hit those trees, and it's saying, nope, we're not going to hit the trees. Now watch what happens next. It actually flies between those tiny little branches. It's unbelievable. Okay, so I hope those examples were helpful. That third one, I'm telling you, I did it close to me because if it did crash, I wanted to be able to go find it and apologize for running into a tree. But again, what I'm trying to prove here is I'm not saying go wild out there in the woods and just start flying towards things to see if it'll crash. What I'm trying to point out is that basic obstacle avoidance is a great feature that's very sophisticated in the latest versions of these drones that will keep your drone safe and if you just have it in normal mode, it'll break. It'll actually break back and it won't run into something. Now, if you're filming, especially if you're using, you know, one where it's going to follow you through the woods, that's not very exciting because you want to have continuous footage when it's flying. And if it's breaking every time it sees a tree or a branch, it's going to give you choppy footage. So turn on bypass. I would stay out of nifty um, for now until you get comfortable with it or you know for sure that you're not going to have branches and things around you. But if you put it in bypass mode, as you can see from those examples, it flies smoothly and it's smart and it's incredibly good at finding objects that are going to be a challenge to it and looking for holes and navigating around that. And, and the thing I like the best about APAS is that it doesn't do that incidentally. It doesn't wait till it gets there to make the decision. It's looking 200 meters in some cases out in front of it, identifying the landscape that it's about to enter into and plotting a flight path around those objects even 30, 50 meters out. So it isn't, again, instantaneously making that decision, which would be really jerky flying in the air. It already knows there's a hole, there's a hole behind it, there's a hole down the road, I'm going this direction. Now, if Rick, like in the third example, decides, oh, wait a minute, I'm going to go left, it's got to recalculate that path, but it already knows where the trees are and where the holes are, so it pulls me away from the tree and finds another hole. So for me, that APAS technology was very kind of stealthily introduced by DJI. It was in the notes. They talked a little bit about it in the promo materials. But once I got the drone up in the air and I started playing around with it, it blew me away. It absolutely is a game changer if you're flying a drone. And honestly, I fly pretty much every manufacturer's drone that's out there. Nobody does it better than DJI. And I know that sounds like I'm biased, but I'm biased on the technology because as a guy who follows technology and studies it and really respects it, these guys have it nailed. So that's all I really had for today. If you have any questions or comments, please drop those down below and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. I have so much more content coming. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Hit that subscribe button down there in the corner and join the Drone Valley family because we're going to be reviewing a lot of new drones, a lot of new video technology, and a lot of power stations, a lot of things you care about here on the channel. And you'll want to be here for those reviews. So Again, that's all I had for today. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, as always, <laughs> happy flying. Mm -hmm.